everyone and welcome to my Skullduggery Pleasant Grimoire reading vlog. So this is the Grimoire, I cannot say this, this is the Grimoire Skullduggery Pleasant um, book. It's essentially a recap of the previous 14 books in preparation for Until the End which is the final ever Skullduggery book which is out in 10 days and I'm in denial but I wanted to read this one because it's a recap like I said and even though I have been doing the Dead Famous Read Along which is re reading all of the books it's been a while since I've read like book one for example so while I remember it quite well I did want to read these ones and also there is bonus content and things like that throughout this book so I really want to read it. Abby also says this is what I uh, like highly recommended and that there is some sort of story weave, like woven throughout it as well. This is probably going to be a quicker reading vlog because I don't think there's going to be that many revelations or whatever. There may just be me going, wait a minute, I thought this happened instead of this or whatever. But we'll see. So we'll get into this. This is a reasonable chunker. I'm only reading 110 pages today as part of our buddy read. So I'm going to get in with it and get on with it and see what this one's all about. I'm just at the introduction. I'm literally here. Right, and what I love is that this just sums up the two of them so well. I don't think anyone should learn from Skulldog Replays and Valkyrie Kane. He's a bad influence on her, and she's a bad influence on him, and they're probably a bad influence on you, dear reader. Just sums them up perfectly. I think that just sums them up. Also, I love that. I love that art. That is, that's like the original artwork. Love it. And Doors of uh, People with No Imagination. <laughs> Oh, it's coming back to me. This is all coming back to me. I feel like this is going to be a really nice trip down memory lane. They've just mentioned the horror writer's ball and the fact that Scott Dark was then. It's like, I've read that short story. I have read that short story. I love that this is all bringing into it, but I love as well that Valkyrie's like, whatever happened to Sebastian Forks? And Scott Dark goes, I don't know. I think he fell off a cliff. I love how just sort of like, yeah, he may have fallen off the cliff, I don't know, kind of thing. I really love that. Also, we've got another illustration here of Euro Boris, I think that is, of Rome Boris uh, in Memoriam. That's just the letter from Derek Landy just fell out. I'll leave that out for a minute. It said, he had a look, the ladies would say did smolder. It's a pity he couldn't evolve, avoid that boulder. <laughs> Brilliant. I said this was going to be a short thing but I'm, I'm only on page 39 and there's probably going to be a whole load of other things I'm going to have to mention but what I really want to mention right now is on page 39 when they're talking about Skullduggery's pain receptors and they're saying um, it has been proposed that much of its ability to detect physical discomfort could be due to the so-called phantom limb phenomenon which is the sensation of a limb being still attacked. Consensus has been reached that the pain he feels is probably psychosomatic, but that any attempt to relieve him of this hindrance could in fact destabilise his entire sense of being, which might lead to total discombobulation. I love that as like a little sort of explanation for Skullduggery. Like how he feels pain and like how he keeps himself together, things like this, because there's such a mystery around that. But I love that this has basically gone, yeah, Scientists have tried to figure this out. <laughs> I like the fact that there are scientists who have tried to figure out how Skullduggery works as a being. I'm so glad somebody does that because I would have been right on that as a scientist. I would have been like, right, I need to find out how he's in one piece and feels pain and breathes and whistles and sighs and speaks and all the rest of it. I would need to know that. So I'm glad somebody. I, I'm glad Derek Landy thought of this. I'm glad Derek Landy thought of this. Just turn over the next page. That's the picture of the cleavers, and that's not what I expected a cleaver to look like. I expected the cleavers to look more like the stick, like this, or like the plasma vaults. The thing's made out entirely out of leather in Doctor Who in the episode Smith and Jones. It was somewhere between those two, that's what I imagined a cleaver to look like. I didn't imagine them to have a long coat. I don't know why. That's interesting to know that after 15 years, I'm still wrong on how things look. Good to know I'm still wrong on this. I'm loving this little attention to detail in the fact that the clearly the archivist who is writing this is also in love with China, because everybody is. Because it's recapping China killing Crocs, right? 
and it said um, her finger pulled the trigger and the bullet happened to find its way into Crux's chest, preventing him from living any longer. Miss Sorrows, who was obviously innocent of any crime, left the scene probably due to distress. <laughs> I love that. I just love that sort of... You can tell, like, how people write about China is the same as how they talk about her, in the sense that they are in love with her because of her beauty and the spell she's got on herself and all the rest of it. I love that it's even in the archives as well. Just all these little attention to detail, I really love that. And also the fact that this is all coming back to me, like it should do, because the books I'm currently reading about are the ones that I've read, like, multiple times. But I still love that it's all coming back to me really well at the moment. I'm really liking that. So I'm just about to start the second section here and... Can we just appreciate this art of Dark S and Lord Vile because that is rather cool and also the sparrow flies south for the winter section as well. I just think I really love these kind of details. I love the little quotes and the artwork and all the rest of it and like the coffee splats on here as well. It just sort of adds to like the realism of all of this. First of all, can we appreciate the Lord Vile bit of art here and Valkyrie like ruining Skullduggery's moment of announcing he's Lord Vile. But then on the next page, Valkyrie's saying like, um, no wonder Skullduggery was so cool with her being Dark S because he was Lord Vile, right? And he says, it's because I've gone through the same thing, I had tasted the darkness. And Valkyrie's like, you tasted the darkness, had you? And Skullduggery says, I'm allowed to have some poetry in my life, Valkyrie. And Valkyrie says, tasted the darkness? I swear to God, what? Did you have a darkness sandwich or was it a whole plate? What have you? What did you have for dessert? Was it pretentiousness? Did you have a bowl of pretentiousness for dessert? And Skullduggery goes, I used to be happier before I met you. And she goes, lies. I, just, I love the banter that throughout this. I love that it's still like like loads and loads of banter and stuff like this and you really get to see more of like how Scarlet Ogre and Valkyrie work even though we obviously know how they work because we've seen it like in loads of books by now in 14 books specifically but I still like that we get that sort of like banter throughout this in different ways and them trying to like one-up each other and all the rest of it throughout this. I'm really liking that. We just found out about Scott Ugly's parents and his brothers and uh, da, da, whoa. So Scott Ugly was born in 1580. His mother was part of the Arbiter Corps and also like fought in like the um, third. She was born in the 1360s, and she was the most hated enemy of the Necromancers but she killed basically every single one that came after her until they called off the hunt in 1418 and then she um like managed to infiltrate two different sides of an alliance and caused the war of splinters and i i i didn't realize we were gonna get that kind of family thing and the fact that like they just uh, like she ran away with the youngest five after uh, like the youngest five children when the five oldest left um to sort of create their own lives and they end up um and then they ended up like, next being seen on december 2nd 1607 when arbiters arrived at their house to find that everything was on fire, the children were outside and his mother was inside, her blood spilled, her body broken, her life extinguished and the eldest said it was father. Didn't see that coming, didn't see that coming, like I knew that there was going to be a darkness in his family but a uh, dad. No words, I'm going to need some time to, like, absorb this. Did it... <laughs> I have no words. I have no words. I have no words. I loved this comic section. Specifically, I'm going to take this bit out because this keeps on falling out, but... It's just Valkyrie going, shovel! <laughs> she just whacked the guy with it. <laughs> I just love that. Shovel! <laughs> That just really amused me. That really, really amused me. So I've just gotten to this. I'm definitely going to take that page out. It keeps on falling out and I keep on forgetting to take it out. But anyway, that's the picture we've got of China Sorrows. And that's not quite how I imagined her. But is it me or does she look a bit like Elizabeth Hendrich? You know the one who plays um, Simmons in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? 
I'll put a picture here. But to me, she looks a bit like her. I don't know if she'd be my fan cast. I mean, I've been fan casting Charlize Theron for years now, just because of the sheer level of badassery, but that definitely looks like Elizabeth H Elizabeth Hendrich to me, aka Simmons. That's not just me, is it? Please tell me that's not just me who sees that. So I've just read another little bit about Skullduggery's dad, and it, like after he's killed his mother, and it's like, oh hell, in terms of this dude ran a cult, he's killed people, he tried to like make a mass suicide of him and the cult followers, and then disappeared after he sat back up again, after thinking he was gonna be killed in this poison thing, Whoa, and then obviously all the archivists are also disappearing after each section, they are disappearing. So I'm just wondering if this is going to tie back into Skullduggery's dad, or if it's going to be something else, but I'm just like, whoa there. I, like, Abby said there was a storyline that ran through this, but I wasn't expecting it to be like, about Skullduggery's dad and all the rest of it, and like his parents, I wasn't expecting that at all. And also finding out about his parents and all the rest of it suddenly explains a hell of a lot in terms of who Skullduggery is as a person, you know? It makes a lot of sense when you suddenly go, oh, so this happened in his, not formative years, because it wasn't his formative years, but in his younger years, this is what happened even before the war, and before he, like, while he was still fleshy, I guess you could say. Yeah, this explains a lot. This explains a lot. I need an entire book about Skardagri's time as Lord Vile. And an entire, like, at least chapter or half a book, quite frankly. Again, this fell out. Leave it out. Um, about Vile seeing his dad with Mevelyn. Because, um, he said he, because uh, Scott Dugry's dad was in the library all the time researching Gog Magog, which is a very funny name, I'm not gonna lie. It says... He emerged from this library only rarely. One of these rare occasions was in 1735 when he met Mevelin's three generals for the first time. According to the contemporaneous notes... <coughs> I'm dyslexic. No idea. According to the notes, the guy took Nefarian Serpine with brash and dismissive, Baron Vengeance was courteous and charming, and Lord Vile was, surprising no one, silent. Given what we know about Skardugary Pleasant, however, this meeting must have been, at the very least, something of a shock to Lord Vile. An argument could be made that being in the same room as Serpine, the man who'd wor murdered his wife and child, and his own father, the man who who'd murdered his mother, may have led to the epiphany that shook loose Skardugary Pleasant from the Lord Vile persona, and Vi as Vile walked away that very year and Skardugary Pleasant returned. I love that. I love that we actually get a possible explanation as to what snapped Skullduggery out of Lord Vile. Love that. But then also it says a little bit later on, while the Arbiters ceased their pursuit following the amnesty deal and the sanctuaries instructed all operatives to cross Abrogate's name, okay, Skullduggery's dad's name off their wanted list, Skullduggery Pleasant had renewed his search and eventually tracking his father to an abandoned farmhouse in Russia in 1798. For storming the farmhouse, he alerted his siblings, three of whom managed to join him on the raid at Petulance, Ruin, Mirror, Grace and Respair, Kempt. They stormed the building just before dawn on the 18th of August. Nine hours later, Skullduggery Pleasant fled the farmhouse alone. And that's where it ends, and it's like, what the hell happened? Did they all die? Is that part of, like, why Skullduggery is seen as, like, quite dark? Is it because he potentially led three of his siblings to their death? What happened to his dad? What the hell? I'm also looking at, like, the names of his siblings and suddenly going, have we met them in a previous book? Like, none of his siblings' names sound familiar to me. But I am sitting here wondering if possibly we have met them before and we've just, like, not realised that they're his siblings. But surely they would have mentioned it. So I don't think they are. But it's just one of those things where I'm like, have we met these people before? Have they been mentioned in passing at some point? I'd love to know. So this is from the journals of Francis Catawampus. What is with Skullduggery's siblings' names? Um, what was I going to say before that? Yeah, quickly before that bit actually, um, it does say here about um, Solace calling China mother. So I'm glad that's being mentioned again because I was worried that that was just something that was never going to be mentioned again. And we've only got one book left so I'm hoping we're going to get some sort of explanation there because I would like one. But I really liked um, this journal entry though from Francic because 
you get like a proper like look into these siblings and it sort of reminds me a bit of series one umbrella academy in the sense that they are the most dysfunctional family going and they all need help essentially and you've just got them all arguing with each other if you can hear drilling please ignore it but what I liked was also the um, quick explanation as well of how everyone said things. So you've got like at one point Skullduggery doesn't have an ounce of his usual bravado on display. Carver's right as usual. Um, Skullduggery is contradictory as usual. Apricity? No idea. It's shaken. Um, Bayard is bored and like things like this. I really quite like that. But as well... Um, it's sort of like talking about um, how they're going to get the rest of their siblings back because it turns out their dad has gone off with their siblings because he seems to have, have infected their minds with this Gog Magog stuff and they've gone off willingly and they've, um, after the fight he had, like, during the fight he had loads of new powers, that kind of thing and um, then they talked for hours and um, then his siblings went off with him um but i misread a bit of this um it says i wish i could explain why this was so i wish i could relate to you a reader of my most private journals the hidden truth that skullduggery and Nefer uh, nefarian were once childhood friends i thought that meant they'd actually been childhood friends and actually swore out loud but then it goes on to say or they're falling in love with the same wo a woman or they've fallen in love with each other or any one of a thousand reasons why two people would choose to hate each other with such unending ferocity sadly there is no such hidden truth the only truth is that they met as enemies and they just became better enemies as time went by so that scared me a bit because i was like wait they were friends plot twist but i was wrong misread that but also in this chapter as well you get the revelation as well that carver was also set to be killed um at the same time skullduggery was because he was such a threat to Mevelyn and all the rest of it which I find really interesting because obviously we've had throughout the past 14 books loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of references to Mevelyn and the war and the fact that Skullduggery was targeted because he was one of like the top people who was like the biggest threat all the rest of it and then it turns out also Skullduggery's brother was involved but we never have actually gotten any mention of Carver before as far as I remember in terms of them ever having like been a part of the war i didn't realize how many siblings skullduggery had in the first place i always thought like like i knew he had siblings but i thought he only had like maybe like two older brothers and maybe a younger sister or something i don't know but to realize he was sort of on the sort of lower end of the oldest lot is quite interesting the fact that several of them were also all involved with the war so severely that they were actually targeted to be killed is also really interesting i am loving that element of this specifically like don't get me wrong i'm also loving all of the illustrations the comics one of my favorite parts of this as well but like the illustrations throughout it and obviously the really really useful catch-up um of all the previous books because there was stuff i had forgotten I'm also really enjoying the banter, but I think my favourite part of this, without doubt, has to be the backstory of Skullduggery and also the mystery as to what's going on with all the archivists because I've just finished the third one. So I'm now on to the fourth one, which is Gamel, and that's the final archivist. So really excited to see what's actually going on with the archivists and hopefully we're going to get more um, in terms of Skullduggery's family, things like this, maybe what happened to the rest of his siblings because he does say at one point that all of his siblings and his parents are dead so i'm just wondering where his siblings like went what happened to them also i'm kind of hoping we're going to find out the name of his wife and child because that would also be really nice if we can have a mention of at least how he met his wife and when he had a child or their names that'd be really nice as well because i'd very much like to know that because i'm curious we're finding out about scar Duggery's um biological family i want to know about his married family as well because that is fascinating because we know nothing about this man and we are finally getting some answers and i don't want it to stop okay so i'm on to the last archivist and first of all can i just say that this font is slightly annoying like i like the typeset generally but the fact that all of the o's are colored in is really really annoying just as a personal thing because it makes me think like everything is like everything with an o is supposed to be emphasized which makes reading it very very difficult but at the same time in the note that keeps on falling out of this book 
it says i'd also like to point out that there is a section of the grimoire in which the letter o has been printed as a solid black circle this is to be honest odd it's almost as if there's a code embedded in there somewhere there isn't a code but it's almost as if there is but there isn't or is there no not yet um so it may be a code but I can't figure it out. <laughs> I've got no idea. I will Google it later without doubt. But um, what I did actually want to say was I just like this little comment of Skullduggery. I was eaten by a shark once. And Valkyrie goes, no, you weren't. <laughs> it's just like, she just knows. She knows that, he, like, that he's lying. I love that she's not afraid to call him out. I still love the banter of this. I love this line. It says, then the air tore. That's how it looked. It was the Vidu Ds reaching into our universe, getting ready to pull themselves through. So what does Skullduggery do? I'll give you three guesses. And Skullduggery says, I did something incredibly brave and selfless. And Valkyrie says, if uh, if all three of those guesses were uh, not something stupid, then I'm sorry, we just can't be friends. <laughs> I love that she's just not afraid to roast him and she has never been afraid to absolutely roast him. I love that. I know I've said that a whole load. I'm basically repeating myself with this book, but to be fair, this is sort of more like a recap with a few sort of extra bits of information throughout. So I'm just sort of commenting on the banter at the moment because it's just sort of like the Skullduggery family bit and the maggot stuff that's new to me but I am really enjoying this but I just really love the banter it's just one of my favorite things about this whole series whoa 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 what I'm at the like the part what is it part five I think of um, part 5 of Abrogate Raised by Tawdry Hepburn, which first of all, nice name, because that's clearly a take on Audrey Hepburn. But they're talking about the malady virus, right? And it says that, um, malady just wanted to rest after it, it had inhabited the shell of a wretchling. And because she just wanted to rest, she, um, the continued existence of the Raised Forte bloodline, which is Skaldagri's family, meant, um that Malady was uh, unable to find peace, so she decided to eradicate the family. Manufacturing a new virus within her own cell, she sent it out into the world. It found all of Abrogate Raves' children attacking and draining its life forces. Only Skardugri Pleasant was able to maintain the integrity of his life force long enough for the effects to fade. His siblings did not share his aptitude and they died within 24 hours of each other on November 14th, 1958. First of all, that is so sad that he lost all of his siblings in one great big go. I mean, he had lost three of them technically to his dad like a century and a half before. That's still really sad though that he lost all of them. But then the footnote has just... <laughs> Why had I not put this together? Because it says... Upon the establishment of Coraval Academy in Rawhaven, Uther Pacant joined the, as the head of the English department. The circumstances surrounding his apparent resurrection remains unclear as of the time of writing. The status of his siblings remains similarly unclear. I didn't properly read the name of all of the siblings. I didn't read uh, that properly and it, did, it didn't click. That's, that's the teacher who hates Omen. It's... The teacher who hates Omen is Skullduggery's brother. And Skullduggery doesn't know. Because I'm pretty sure that Omen never mentions Pecant to Skullduggery. And if he does, he probably always calls him Pecant. And obviously that's probably like a name that's reasonably popular. So he's not going to click in his head that that's his brother. I didn't see that coming. I didn't. Uh, just Mind blown. Mind. Mind blown. I've got nothing else apart from mind blown. But obviously as well. The fact that this has now been put into this book. As well. And it says obviously the status of his siblings remains similarly unclear. What if this is going to play into the final book? I'm not going to be happy if we get past until the end. And Armageddon out of here part two. With the three new short stories that haven't been anywhere else. If Skullduggery doesn't meet his brother again. No wait, he does mention one of his brothers is alive. Skullduggery does mention one of his brothers is alive, so he probably meant Uther, so he probably knows that he's alive and he won't see him, so... Those two need to beat, those two need to meet, but I didn't see that coming, why didn't I see that coming? He was going to be the, in the school. Just... <laughs> Mind absolutely blown here. I just finished this and what? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> I don't have words. Abrogate Rays is Gog Magog, the god of the apocalypse. Skullduggery is the son of the god of apocalypse. And the virus is spread by people reading about this and their faith and their belief in Gog Magog starts to like fuel him and this is what this is. This this is about Gog Magog so it's like making things up and in the final pages when I get to them I've got to go past the index um saying like um they're saying about the kids they attack it they attack him that they shackle him and they chain him and lock him in a coffin and then redacted and it's redacted on the other bit as well where they're explaining this and it says the more people find out about abrogate rays and gog magog the further the virus spreads uh, but the purpose of the virus is not just to spread it's to feed all worship makes god strong and the virus feeds the virus feeds god uh, gog magog feeds abrogate rays he's trapped in that coffin but he's getting stronger i can hear him in my head he's getting stronger i have to burn all of my notes now destroy this uh, device now no one can read so we've got the faceless ones and now also gog magog and i know that until the end it's supposed to be the final ever book but if derek landy doesn't do a spin-off series or something about this. I'm going to scream. I feel like screaming now. Oh my god. Oh, oh my literal god. Uh, so, so Valkyrie is like the child of the Faceless Ones. She is descended from the Faceless Ones who are gods. And Skullduggery is also descended from a god. But the god of the apocalypse. And is also the Deathbringer. They're both Deathbringers. Technically, they can both be Deathbringers. And he's also Cadaver Cain. And she's also Dark S. Obviously. Um, Uther Picant hates Omen, who's part of the Darkly Prophecy. And he's been resurrected by unknown means. <laughs> I don't have words. I don't have words. I've got, I've got nothing further than I want to scream because this is a lot and we've got one book left and I am genuinely wondering how the hell this is all going to go. There's just so many revelations. I want an entire back series now. I need an entire back series about Skullduggery and his family trying to hunt down his father. Or just more about his father. And obviously as well the King of the Darklands and all the rest of it. I need more. All just... I need to lie down. I need to lie down. I need to message Abby immediately but I also need to lie down to just sort of absorb all of that. So what I'm going to do is wrap up this video here and message Abby a whole ton because she's the only other one apart of the Dead Famous Read Along who's read this. <laughs> I need someone to talk to her about this so Abby if you're watching this I know you'll probably watch this but when you watch this, I apologise now for the messages I'm about to send you. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up. Comment down below, tell me what plot twist got you the most, because I'd love to know. Or if you don't have that much time, leave me a skull emoji down below to let me know that you were here. I'll also leave a link down below to all of my social media if you want to check it out, including to the Comic Book Sanctum, which is my website dedicated to Marvel Comics, as well as to my Etsy and Redbubble store, which serves bookish merch and bookish bullet journal stuff if you are interested in that. Or if you just want to see any more of my videos, specifically my reading vlog, for the final ever Skullduggery book next month please click subscribe here and over here we have the link to my previous video until next time everyone bye <music>